so we are here today to discuss about the uh, nine cities and um, who will be peer reviewing each other uh, during the breakout rooms and uh, uh, we will introduce the cities and the city representatives in some time uh, we start the whole session with uh, a, a keynote speaker from uh, amsterdam with uh, uh, paul lecroat giving us some insights from our last event from paris and paul gerritsen the director of delta metropole giving uh, some welcoming notes and telling us about the new planning of it the whole uh, the whole uh, program is uh, divided into three parts the first is the introduction and keynote the second part is the breakout rooms with uh, cities and uh, uh, participants being divided into smaller groups and the third part is the conclusion and ball so most of you already know about the new planning dialogue we discuss various scales and subjects to answer the big question how to effectively plan uh, for the big challenges that we are facing now in this fifth activity we are focusing the discussion on the city scale and the subject of decision making so we'll all know more about we hope to learn something from today from these sessions and we hope to be able to discuss more about this subject in future uh we are going to uh, uh we'll be having first three uh, panelists on board but before we get into that i would like to introduce our partners for this uh, meeting city of amsterdam uh, initiated this idea of uh, city scale and decision making in the new planning perspective and uh, dagmar kim frank and especially eric pasweer the head of strategy from spatial planning and sustainability department of uh, city of amsterdam they are on board today and uh, they will be giving some uh, at some moment or the other they will be telling their thoughts about it uh, before i get into the uh, speak uh, the before i introduce uh, invite paul rekroat and eric on board uh let's do a quick poll let's see who are we and what do we think about uh, new planning so the first poll is i hope everybody is getting the option so uh 44% of the viewers today are urban planners or designers or architects 22% a good number are policy makers and then there are academicians and students on board so that's a good good spread of people uh there is unfortunately we do not have anybody from the decision maker or the politician perspective let's see if still somebody joins in between uh but uh, we go go to the next poll and we will ask uh, paul gerritsen to react on these numbers so what do we think about new planning do we think it is a it is something that we need right away we need to change some thinking we need to take some decisions on sit, on the city level or in other scales to cope with the current environmental and societal challenges uh, there are a lot of demands right now a lot of pressure on the uh, planning system 
and uh, a inclusiveness and more integration is certainly needed. That's what I think, but let's see what everybody votes for. Okay, so yeah, 75% of us thinks that yes, this is the right time to uh, try and think of some changes in the new planning and we definitely need the new planning. So I hope today at the end of the day, we would like to have some answers how to do it. I give the stage to the director of uh, Delta Metropolis Association and the initiator of new planning dialogue, Paul Gerritsen, to react on these numbers. So, Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Alan Krita, for uh, for starting up this uh, this session. Thank you all for uh, for joining. It's uh, it's quite exciting to see all of these uh, small faces on my screen popping up. Uh, a lot of familiar faces. Very nice that you could all um, join this afternoon. I'm really curious how this works out. We will also ask you this question: uh, what you thought of it, like in terms of um, of the type of meeting that we could have online. Uh, we've um, also stepped up uh, a little bit uh, the challenge uh, by, uh, by introducing this breakout room. So I'm, I'm really curious how technically this will, um, will work out, but hopefully it will also lead to uh, an interactive uh, session today. Um, I'm, uh, I'm quite surprised by your answers uh, in the last question of polling. There obviously is uh, one person who normally I would immediately address in public uh, who, who said, no, we don't need any change of paradigm. Um, but uh, online, this might be a little bit um, um, uh, too difficult. Um, um, but what is maybe even more striking is the result that there is actually uh, nobody who doesn't know about, uh, about whether we should uh, change something. And that is um, actually a pity because today we're here to discuss um, a, 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 discuss this issue and uh, and it would be nice if you're sort of curious to understand what uh, what direction we need to take but if we're, perhaps we should do the poll again at the end and and see if um, if, if something has changed um, I want to just introduce uh, you a little bit to the to the kind of thinking we had when we started the new planning uh, but also more specifically to the subject of uh, of today we will um, uh, have uh, other introductions as well, but I think uh, it's nice uh, to give you a little bit of, uh, of context. In the Netherlands, in the Dutch context, and I think it's very nice that today we uh, again have um, uh, have attendance from, uh, from all over Europe, so that's also very nice, very welcome, so it's also very nice to introduce a little bit of the situation in the Netherlands. Uh, in the Netherlands, um, uh, just a decade ago, the, um, the communist opinion was that uh, the Netherlands was complete. Everything was in place, everything was thought about, we just needed to do a little bit of maintenance, and then uh, most things will be fixed for the future. Um, uh, so in that period, we decided that, uh, that a dedicated uh, department for housing and spatial planning was no longer needed, and that the responsibilities for thinking about planning and uh, making visions was much more uh, put um, towards the provinces and, uh, and the municipal uh, level. Um, however, uh, um, now, a decade later, uh, Parliament just recently has uh, demanded action again on the national level, has demanded from the government that there will be a new department for spatial planning again. Um, and uh, that, of course, is because um, we have these enormous challenges which have direct and also visible impact uh, on the living environments of people. And, um, and in, 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 in that sense, there is a, um, a, a lot of attention more again for thinking about the future and trying to cope 
uh, with uh, the consequences. At the same time, we see that the cities and metropolitan regions have taken up um, this role of thinking about the future, of coordinating, um, and um, uh, in many instances, also the cities. The cities themselves have become uh, the powerhouses for planning and directing. So there, there you have the uh, de um, decentralization of, uh, of planning. Um, but uh, in, in, and in many cases, I think it's also nice to see that in many cases, the, um, uh, the issues at hand are realized to be much larger than just uh, on a municipal uh, uh, level itself. So um, when you look at circular economy, climate adaptation, sustainable energy, I think in most cases we realize that um, um, that we will not manage these kind of challenges just uh, from a, a singular municipal authority, but they have to be coordinated. However, how is that uh, dealt with in terms of uh, de democratic legitimation and accountability? Um, and how can we uh, make sure that there is a, a, a balanced approach to these uh, issues when we will know that in some areas there will be uh, uh, people benefiting for um, um, uh, decisions taken in other uh, areas and um, in that context we really have to understand how in order how to uh, coordinate uh, that uh, as an example in the, in the Netherlands currently we were working on a, on a regional sustainable energy strategies most will become uh, uh, public in um, in a month's time uh, and this regional perspective from uh, the standpoint of the energy system and perhaps also the landscape impact is a logical choice but in terms of government uh, standpoint you could also say that perhaps it's a political choice of handing down uh, the hot potato to a scale where, where there's actually little structure and responsibility available as such. It is not the municipal level, it's not the provincial level for which we have these kind of systems in place and it's even less a state affair. So how will that boil down if we really have to take difficult decisions? So that relationship between vision making the complexity of vision making on a larger scale than just one single municipality um, and its relationship um, in, in, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of its uh, democratic uh, um, decision making um, is, is the issue at hand. Also in investments I think you see, uh, particularly in the Netherlands, most uh, investments in spatial structure uh, are coordinated from the central level so most money comes from state level and uh, from municipalities to uh, to take part of uh, of the pie that is available it requires a constant attention and lobbying which takes up a lot of time from um, from the local politicians um, we have quite a uh, integrate structure in place to coordinate this in a, in a, in a good uh, manner but you see that it requires much more tactics than strategy actually and sometimes this vision making seems uh, very um, uh, uh, this vision making seems to take place in a parallel uh, reality which only has partly a relationship with uh, places and um, areas where uh, decisions are made, being made in terms of investments um, in the netherlands particularly um, there have been recently a lot of investments uh, decisions made which were much more based on uh, on, on the play between uh, local governments and uh, central government in terms of of, uh, of attracting these kind of investment investments then in relationship to its um, societal goals particularly you've we've seen recently with very expensive infrastructure uh, decisions that uh, once the um, the infrastructure is delivered you wonder what was it actually uh, uh, why we were deciding in the first place to have this infrastructure in place um, so the project has gained its own goal and life and seems hard to understand afterwards what was actually the reason for that perhaps of course this is a problem of uh, all time but I think confronted with these big challenges of climate adaptation of energy transition um, all of these big societal challenges that we uh, that we have 
we require a more effective planning um, approach and uh, the margins for error are diminishing uh, all the time. Um, so in this context uh, of an, uh, inter, um, a, a much more integrated process of interscalar uh, and multidisciplinary and community involved kind of planning which happens on the local and regional scale, um, it has also a big danger of leading to better plans but at, at the end with less impact and potentially more disappointment um, for the future uh, down the line. Um, of course, um, um, I, I think um, recent uh, effect of the corona crisis, you could also say, is, uh, is maybe a wake-up call in that respect. I think, uh, it, especially in terms of, uh, in, of the Dutch context, it seems that uh, um, uh, next to all the very negative uh, impacts and all the suffering that it has caused, it also has um, re led to an enormous re-evaluation of of the city and, uh, and the direct surrounding of, uh, of people uh, living in there. Uh, so we, we uh, suddenly realize what the quality of uh, green open spaces in your direct uh, vicinity are. And, uh, and we suddenly realize what the, uh, what the quality clean air can be uh, uh, and, uh, and, and, and that we can have um, in the close vicinity the vital, vital infrastructures and um, and services. So I think, uh, I hope at least that uh, that with this sudden realization of how important our um, uh, surroundings are, um, this could lead to um, uh, to a new starting point in, in thinking about how to um, um, deal with planning issues and uh, and, um, and and form a, a good starting point uh, for uh, attracting more attention to uh, towards that. Um, so um, also today, of course, I mean, this is an experiment, this, uh, this first online version, but um, of course, it's also very interesting to see that we can have this international uh, interaction hopefully going on uh, later on, um, just by uh, sitting behind our own desks. I hope we uh, have a very fruitful uh, day and uh, have a good outcome. Uh, and I'm, um, I'm, uh, I want to give the, the word now uh, quickly to uh, Paul Lacroix. We had a previous meeting um, of uh, the new planning dialogues um, uh, at your office in, in Paris. Um, uh, looking back, it seems um, almost impossible to realize that we were so, um, so easy on that, meeting uh, all of us um, in Paris. Um, we, we had just learned that we should not uh, um, shake hands, but uh, apart from that, we just were there quite relaxed, um, traveling from all over Europe. Um, and at that moment, you also introduced uh, your uh, latest uh, book, and I think it would be nice um, if you uh, share uh, quickly um, to all of us um, what you've uh, um, wanted to achieve in that, uh, in that document, because I think it's quite fitting to the subject we have uh, today. So Paul, maybe I can, uh, can uh, give you um, the floor. Uh, please think about uh, unmuting and then, um, uh, then you can go ahead. Yeah, can, can I share a, sc a screen with you? Yes. Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes, okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I would like to share um, a few slides on this, uh, this, this book. You can also see here uh, uh, about uh, cities changing the world. Um, yes, as, uh, as Paul said, thank you actually, uh, Paul and Alan Krita for inviting me to this session. It's uh, very exciting to be with you. And um, Th this work um, started uh, a few years ago, actually. You, as you may know, um, the uh, international exchange and international comparison is really part of our DNA at the uh, Urban Planning Institute for the Paris region. And we've been working in the past uh, uh, a lot, actually, also together with Delta Metropole. And uh, what happened is that um, 
we were invited to work with New York, with the RPA, the Regional Plan uh, Association of, uh, of New York. And what happened is that we realized that although New York is a very successful city, as a region, it's not doing that well. And it's facing some of uh, the same challenges we are facing in the Paris region. And uh, as you can see on the slide, the, the rising cost of housing, the uh, uh, suburbs that are not doing very well, they're shrinking in New York, the, uh, uh, the uh, vulnerability of the, uh, of the city region. You know that um, uh, New York has been through quite a few crises, including the Sandy hurricane a few years ago. And to face this uh, situation, the institutions are really not up to standard. And um, as you may know, the New York region uh, is split by three different states and the governors hardly speak to each other. And uh, the, um, there are very many counties and about 800 municipalities and getting all of them to work together on a, on a vision is almost impossible. And that's why the uh, Regional Plan Association was created in the 20s to uh, uh, bottom up to try and uh, create this, this vision and also bring action and push and advocate for action. And so we, we, we thought that um, as we were together with other cities like London, Tokyo, Sao Paulo and others around the table, well, we thought maybe there's something to look into and uh, see why uh, our city regions uh, are really facing major um, issues at the moment. And so this, this is a, a picture from Tokyo and although um, you, you sometimes think that uh, uh, Japan is a very prosperous country and that uh, Tokyo is doing well, they're quite worried about the future. The um, population is declining, as you know, but also the economic uh, position uh, is not that uh, stabilized with uh, China uh, pushing a lot. And so this is work done by the uh, Mori Memorial Foundation. And what they, they, they built four different scenarios. And uh, what they found out was that uh, if you don't want this stormy scenario to happen, there are lots of different steps to take to reform the whole uh, planning system of the city. Another uh, uh, example is London. London has uh, uh, often been uh, um, a model for us in the Paris region because uh, since 2000 London has got a regional government and uh, this governance has got a vision and has got some strategic plans to make this vision happen. But in fact what we've been seeing in the last uh, 10 to 15 years is that London is getting increasingly unequal. It's uh, probably the most unequal city in, in Europe now. And although some are doing very well, uh, a lot of people can't find uh, housing or decent conditions of life uh, within London and have to go very far out in the suburbs to find this. So we thought maybe there's something to look in, into. And what, what we found out is that Cities are competing between each other. They're competing for investors. They can, they're competing for jobs. They, uh, they're quite selfish on the whole. And uh, what you can uh, see on this map of the Brexit vote is that, of course, uh, being uh, globally prosperous, uh, they don't vote anymore like uh, the rest of the country. So there is a, a a gap widening uh, between cities and their uh, rural and um, national environments. And so this is something uh, uh, quite worrying on which we need to, to work on. Uh, the other uh, important thing to have in mind is that um, the, the cities are growing worldwide 
but there, there was a shift of gravity of the world in the two, uh, since uh, the last 20 years. And this has happened mostly uh, in uh, Southeast Asia. But what's happening now is that there is a new world of cities emerging south. And this is India, it's the Middle East, and it's Africa. And uh, these cities are going to grow probably to uh, scales that we've never seen before. When you, you see on this chart, uh, in 2100, uh, uh, Lagos might be the uh, largest city on earth with about 88 uh, million people living in the region. So it's, these, these cities are going to uh, need energy, they're going to need space to grow, they're going to need uh, facilities and housing. And uh, the question is, are we going to find um, all, all these in a sustainable way? What, what we found out was really that we, we often see uh, cities as solutions. And of course, they've been quite active. Uh, city governments have been active uh, working on uh, climate change and other issues. But in fact, what you find out is that cities are still drug addicts. They are uh, addict to uh, um, energy, cheap energy, and mostly uh, fossil fuel energies. And so they are capturing um, a lot of the uh, world resources and they're also uh, capturing a lot of the world wealth. And this is, uh, question of distribution and so we need to uh, work on that too. The, this, this, this book uh, uh, was um, written by uh, many uh, authors, uh, some, some of you actually, and uh, it's divided into four chapters and the first chapter was to find out what were the very very big cities uh, uh, doing the Paris region is a, a city region of 12 million people and we're interested in uh, getting uh, a state of the art of what other cities are doing uh, in terms of visions and, and strategies. The, the second chapter uh, is about how do cities change course because we realize that uh, the, the course we are currently following uh, needs to be uh, dramatically altered and what's interesting is that there are already cities that have worked on, on this. When you think of the rural region in, in Germany or if you think of the city of Medellin in Colombia, they've been uh, rethinking their models and so that's uh, uh, what we are, we wanted a few stories about that to understand how they did that. The third uh, chapter is about what could be the catalysts of change. And of course, social and environmental initiatives are going to be really central in, in, in the world to come. And that's what we, we try to find out. And the third chapter is about new paradigms. What, who, who are behind these new paradigms and how can we work together? And so I'll, I'll go very quickly into uh, what we did, we, we mapped, of course, and we got a lot of data. And uh, we uh, looked into some strategies. And interestingly, in New York, you see uh, the health value very high up on the agenda and the equity uh, question also. So this is quite something quite interesting. What's interesting is the way that uh, uh, new, the New York Regional Plan brings bottom-up stuff, working with different communities at different levels and producing reports. And each of, this report, of these reports are uh, material for uh, advocacy. And this is quite an interesting uh, bottom-up process. London is an interesting uh, case also uh, uh, for us in, in, in Paris. There is this housing obsession in London. And what we could say uh, at the current stage is that the more you build housing uh, units in London, and the, the deep, 
the deeper the crisis, the housing crisis. The, the question is uh, housing stock and housing and building with the needs of the people, not just affordability, but also um, the, the size of, of uh, housing, the density, which is uh, uh, probably too high in many uh, developments, and the overall design. Oops, I don't know, I think my connection is not, oh yeah, okay. Uh, another interesting case of course is, is uh, uh, Medellin in, uh, in Colombia, uh, where there was really work done on what they call social urbanism. And they developed uh, uh, new concepts in the 90s um, within their strategic uh, um, plan, process and they worked a lot with different communities and what they uh, imagined as a concept was the learning city, the city that was a, a place to learn and to, um, to um, how do you say, train a new generation uh, on um, um, about uh, having new skills and this uh, uh, was uh, developed through these uh, bibliotheque parks, uh, library parks, uh, uh, and also the, um, the, the system of uh, transport, cheap, cheap transportation, and also a lot of integrated work in the neighborhood. And this has been really successful because uh, when you imagine that uh, Medellin was uh, a place uh, 30 years ago where the, um, uh, and the narco, the uh, drug uh, gangs were really controlling the city. Uh, now it's a city where, of course, there's still a lot of poverty, uh, but there's much more hope because it, it was done in quite an integrated way with the communities. Another interesting aspect is uh, we designed in the uh, 60s and 70s our cities around cars and here uh, you got a picture of, of Seoul in Korea. The, this is the functionalist uh, uh, vision of the city that we, we had just 30 years ago and it's been very difficult to uh, move to another direction. Seoul um, started by in, in the early 2000s by getting rid of an, an urban highway right in the center of the city to um, rediscover this river that was uh, the, um, the birthplace really of the of the city and uh, it's really been so successful that now Seoul is really moving away from uh, the car oriented city and a lot of cities are moving in that pathway and I think this is a lot of interesting reflection for all of our cities. Of course we are becoming more and more Dutch all over the world. Uh, we are developing uh, bike oriented development and it's not just bike lanes, it's not, not just bike facilities but it's also imagining uh, the housing and the uh, facilities and the retail that uh, can be accessible by bike. And so it's also the scale of the city which is uh, different from the, uh, the car oriented uh, city. So this is also an interesting thing for the future. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm going very quickly because I don't have much time, but we can discuss about that uh, later. Another thing we've seen was a lot of cities are involved in repairing ecosystems and uh, in the Great Lakes they are a lot of cities are, are, are working uh, creating new wetlands where uh, the uh, there was uh, there were paved parkings they are working on uh, uh, eco neighborhoods with uh, uh, water systems natural water systems and you get of course uh, uh, still cities like uh, um, Copenhagen where 
the green structure, and uh, I think you're quite good at that in the Netherlands too, the green structure is all as important as, as the gray structure. And this is really uh, something, at least for us in the Paris region, that we need to work on. Of course, the social uh, crisis is uh, probably the, the most important thing at, uh, at the current time. And uh, what we really need to work on uh, is the, the housing policies, that's something really important, but also uh, the transport policies that are, uh, need to be also socially oriented. Uh, what we found out was that uh, the cities that have a very um, long-term vision of their uh, housing policies and strategies, such as Vienna, or uh, uh, cities in the north of Europe are doing better than the cities that have uh, uh, privatized uh, their, uh, their social uh, housing stock and their social housing agencies. Um, cities are also working more and more, this is the last chapter of the KA, working more and more together. Uh, unfortunately, in the KA, you'll find this uh, chart in, in English, but it's just to say that um, they are cooperating at a, a, a larger and larger uh, level. Uh, but often this is just uh, working with, um, how do you say, uh, in, in, in French you would say working with people like you. It's, it's not so much sharing with uh, uh, regions that are not doing so well. It's usually um, cities that are, are uh, fairly wealthy working together and, and lobbying together. But we really need to work um, at different scales. Of course, this is the northern uh, Nordic Baltic space. Um, Peter Austin may uh, comment on, on, on this. It's just the idea that we need to work more closely together between cities and at, at uh, different scales, not only to share our experiences, but also to have common agendas and have um, action plans where we really act uh, together and with or without our national governments. And oops, and um, yeah, this is the idea that um, uh, we, Paul, you, you mentioned earlier, we really need to work at a, a wider regional scale and make sure that um, the, the hinterlands, which are not hinterlands, which are really uh, rural areas of themselves with their own identity, their own culture and their own economy. But uh, some of, of them are not doing very well and they need to be working more closely uh, with the city uh, networks um, to make sure that um, the, the, the food which is produced there is uh, um, also um, is cons consumed there. There needs to, there need to be more um, balanced and more regionalized uh, uh, economic system, uh, energy production, energy consumption uh, uh, should be more localized. That's some important uh, uh, aspect. So we really need to find new instruments to work uh, together uh, at uh, uh, regional and inter-regional uh, scale. And as, as, as we, we said in that uh, little uh, survey showed that uh, we, we are really um, looking for new paradigms. Um, what's interesting is that in the 60s, um, uh, many of you know about the uh, Buchanan report on uh, the car and the city. And at, in those days, they were in a situation where something completely new was going to come massively in the cities and you had to rethink completely the organization of cities. And I think we are probably in quite a similar uh, situation where the changes are so massive that the digital revolution is coming, uh, the, uh, the um, 
of course, uh, the health uh, crisis has shown that we are very, very vulnerable. We are uh, uh, very interdependent and this uh, uh, creates a very strong vulnerability. So what, what we found out in, um, in this um, case is that um, we, we need to um, repair our systems, but we need to uh, imagine the cities as uh, having the capacity to regenerate, not just to uh, uh, have a, um, a carbon footprint or uh, an urban footprint on their environment, but also help their environment to be more sustainable. So they, they, this is really a new responsibility, I think, of cities is they've been consumers and now they, mean they need to be producers of new uh, uh, sustainable environments. And they also, of course, have got a, a, a strong uh, social uh, di dimensions, social role. Uh, they are very important um, for uh, education. They are very important for interacting, uh, um, for people interacting together. And this, this role is not just at the city level that they need to play it, but it's at the regional level uh, more and more, I think. Well, these are a few uh, re reflections. Uh, we can talk about uh, all that uh, later on. So I, I, I'll stop, uh, stop there. Thank you very much. And you, you, this, this book is available on the internet. You can download it on our, our website for free. Uh, thank you so much, Paul. This was really good overview. I have read the book personally, and I think this is a really good opportunity for everybody to understand what is happening around the whole world and the relations that you mentioned with New York is certainly uh, nice for everyone to know. Uh, I hope I won't take more time here because we are already going a bit uh, ahead of time. Uh, maybe uh, 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 I will drop a link to the book for everyone when I'm uh, addressing the participants so that they can find the book and order it or something. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, now I would like to invite Eric Pasfier from the city of Amsterdam. He is the director of uh, uh, strat uh, strategy from sustainability and spatial planning department. And he's the keynote speaker for today. He would like to share his experiences from the city of Amsterdam and the city of Den ha The Hague and how decision-making process and should city visions go hand in hand. Eric, it's up to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think you're supposed to start the slides. Hello? I'm putting it, Eric, one minute. Okay, okay. So, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation uh, and uh, all the work that has been done. Uh, this is the last sheet. Can you, can you put on the first sheet? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, by the uh, Delta Metropolitan Association. And uh, thank you very much, everyone, for uh, uh, joining this this uh, this meeting. Um, these are challenging times, of course. Uh, also, in terms of our capacity to uh, to collaborate um, there are times where tensions rise where uh, borders become more and more important uh, where at the same time um, cooperation is needed so thank you very much everyone for uh, for joining um, actually I'm not a director I'm simply a head of a strategy which is a, a nice job as well um, and I've worked in uh, The Hague previously, and uh, today I work for the city of Amsterdam. Uh, to say that I'm keynote speaker is also a big of an exaggeration. Um, and I personally am very much uh, interested in the, uh, the, the peer review part of this meeting. So I, I made some slides as a uh, quick introduction. 
uh, indicating what I think would be interesting to discuss in the, in the, in the working groups. So can I have the, the next slide, please? Um, I, I think from Amsterdam, uh, The Hague and the other big cities in the Netherlands, uh, we can speak about a very strong uh, tradition of city planning. Uh, it's important to note that this is a tradition. This is a tradition, it's part of our DNA. We, we, we've been done this as a professional group for generations time already. Um, uh, and uh, it started, I think, uh, it's always arbitrary to, to point, pinpoint a starting point, but it started to my mind uh, in the national housing law in 1901. And it's a peculiar law because I think this is the, the legal a foundation of urbanism and urban planning as a profession, but its foundation is in a housing law, not in an urban planning law. And the uh, housing law of 1901 in the Netherlands, but I think there are similar, uh, similar legislation uh, in Northwest Europe, uh, elsewhere, and also in uh, the Americas, but in the Netherlands, uh, it contained of, of three important uh, foundations. One is uh, the, the law, of course, uh, is about housing. So it's, it defines urban planning in terms of mass housing, of the housing issue. Secondly, it defines urban uh, planning in terms of urban expansion. Um, and thirdly, it allows for a very big and after 1901 rapidly growing a commitment and uh, 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 position uh, of, uh, for the public authority, especially uh, the local public authority. So you could argue that uh, we started the century uh, ago uh, in urban planning and in, in vision making for cities in these three terms. And the uh, fourth issue, uh, the fact that um, urban planning was obligatory made it uh, urban planning to an institution. Uh, the law contains many obligations and the main obligation that I uh, shortly will introduce today is the obligation to make uh, a plan, an expansion plan for cities in order to produce sufficient housing and to have this done by the public authority. And the fact that it is legally obligatory to make a plan uh, also allowed for a tremendous fast development of the profession, both in terms of methodology, in terms of attitude, in terms of conceptual framework, in terms of uh, legitimizing uh, urban decisions. Um, a big field of experimentation and learning uh, that, that started 120 years ago. And also very important to note that this started uh, as part of the, the urban crisis that uh, challenged cities shortly before the turn of the century with many, many big diseases uh, and uh, epidemics in the cities. So there are some parallels with uh, today's situation. Can you have the next sheet? Please. Yeah. So this is a very, very important and very famous example of where this tradition led to. I think it's one of the, uh, the highlights of the tradition, so to speak, uh, internationally uh, known as an example of, of that era. Uh, the, the general expansion plan for the city of Amsterdam in 1935 made, uh, most people know that by uh, famous architect, urban planner Van Eesten, but also founded uh, uh, and, and supported by vast uh, statistical analysis and uh, research by uh, Van Dohuizen, which was his partner in the city of Amsterdam by that time. So it's very interesting and very important to note this is not just a design uh, uh, and a, f a formal spatial concept, but it's, it's part of an, of an uh, integrated methodology. Uh, so as we speak today about a new paradigm, well, this is visualizing a paradigm, not just in terms of form and architecture, but also in terms of methodology and way of thinking. Can I have the next slide? Uh, 
just the, the five points that I find uh, striking and uh, as basis for comparison with today, uh, what strikes me is that this general expansion plan is single scale. Hmm. Uh, it is about the city and about the city only. Uh, and it thinks as, uh, about the city, it contemplates the city as, uh, as a body with a central core. Um, and then it has a single agenda. It's basically about new standard housing areas. Uh, there are some, some industrial areas, but they're quite uh, roughly and ab abstractly uh, 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 planned in this plan, but the, 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 the main focus is about housing and about standard housing only. Then there's a single method. It's the method of scientific planning. This, this uh, data-based, uh, analytical-based uh, approach of, of design. It is a single form of concept, a very clear concept about the contrast between green and red, between the build-up and the open space on the level, scale level of, of uh, the city. And it has this universal approach, uh, the, the separation of functions con really conforming the, the SIAM doctrine. So these are five issues, scale, agenda, method, formal concept, and approach. And then let have, let's have a look at the next sheet. This is a, we jumped 80 years. Uh, this is the existing uh, uh, structural vision for Amsterdam today. Um, uh, it's only six years old, but it's already outdated. So we're in uh, Amsterdam working very hard on uh, a new uh, uh, structural vision, a new uh, vision on the environment. Um, and just, just take a look at this, this picture and try to remember the, 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 the picture of this general extension plan of Van Eerste in 1935. Next sheet, please. So what is striking? Can I have the next sheet, please? Oh yeah. No, no, I have this. In white, you see the the big, big extension plan of Van Eester, and you, you see that it's become part that uh, the, the areas that once were conceived as new, as the city of the future, the city of tomorrow, are now the city of today, uh, part of a metropolitan uh, landscape. Can I have the next sheet? So this is in 80 years time, a big, big difference in so to speak, paradigm, the, the issue of the, the, the new planning uh, uh, course of the, the Delta Metropolis Association. Uh, just take a look at the five points that I pointed out uh, on the 1935 plan. It's not a single scale, it's a multi-scale uh, plan. It's city and region. It has uh, also multiple cores. It's not simply one city with a, with a downtown area. There are many uh, cores and it spreads uh, in its thought, in its uh, strategy, far beyond the borders of the city. So it's, it's interesting to note that this, this uh, vision of Amsterdam uh, describes the future of a big area, but is only decided by, by the city of Amsterdam within her own borders and the legal status of the, the plan is only, uh, will, is only uh, uh, restricted to the, the city area. So we think about a bigger picture, but we act within narrow borders. This is interesting. This is interesting about uh, how city planning works today. Then it has a broad agenda. I don't know if you noticed, but the, the agenda, the agenda of the, the, the plan, uh, it has a great, great variety of topologies of housing, services, public space, and so on. You see a long, long list, much richer, much more variety, much more uh, precise and specific. Can I have the, the next no, this, 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 this piece? And it has a very differentiated approach. It's not just this, this scientific planet method. There is, of course, a lot of data analysis, but it's also very much based upon participation. So it's not an objective scientific truth to have a city form like shown by the 1935 plan. It is also part of the participation process and of a persuasion, so to, or maybe a seductional uh, process of, of bringing stakeholders together. So more than a scientific or a content-based approach, it's also a stakeholder-based approach that led to this uh, structural vision. 
Then if you try to reimagine the, the, both the formal concept, an almost uh, a graphic picture, very one-dimensional one of the 1935 plan, and a very rich formal uh, imagery of the, the, nine, the 2014 plan. And then also interesting that in that time uh, we, we made plans not by one simple doctrine like the Siam doctrine, but there is a lot of regional specificity, not only in Amsterdam, but also in The Hague, the other bigger cities in the Netherlands. So can I have the next sheet, please? Um, interesting, we now we live in a time where we have a new starting point for urban planning. Like in 1901, we have a new law, this time not about housing, but about physical planning, the new environmental act. Um, uh, and it has, again, an obligatory part. Every city, every municipality must have an environmental vision. So that means that um, we will see a lot of these environmental visions in the Netherlands in the upcoming years. Uh, it is described as a comprehensive plan for the physical living environment. Uh, so that's a, that's a wide concept of urban planning. It's not just housing. It's the, the, the total uh, idea of physical living environment. And it has a legal status. It's an umbrella for uh, a next generation of land use plans and programs that are also obligatory in the cities in the Netherlands in the next com uh, upcoming years. So I foresee an, 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 an era of experimenting and learning like the, the one or two decades after 1901 uh, which uh, led to this, this uh, big and interesting and fruitful tradition of urban planning in the Netherlands. Unfortunately, the new law is postponed, but uh, it will take uh, uh, be put in place. Uh, it, it will be formalized shortly, we expect next year or so. Interesting features, I, I just noticed, the agenda is, is very broad. It's not just housing. It's on also not just space, it's activities, and it's a living environment uh, uh, approach. Participation is a key issue. And uh, there is a lot of room for local uh, balancing and local discussion of general regulations. So we will see more regional and local specificity in urban planning, as opposed to this general university CM-like approach that we used to have in the early ages. So it's a, a great opportunity for the Netherlands to experiment, to learn and to develop, redevelop, further develop this uh, Dutch uh, tradition of urban planning. Next sheet, please. Um, we have to, but we also, uh, on, in, in terms of legal uh, obligations, but it's also necessary. Uh, all cities in the Netherlands, like I think um, almost every or practically every big city in the world, has a number of challenges in common with uh, the big cities in the Netherlands. The Paris Agreement, of course, the climate uh, change and the energy transition, uh, big migration issues, segregation, uh, uh, the necessity to uh, transform the transportation system, uh, from a car-based uh, system towards public transport, uh, uh, rail, uh, but most of all, uh, pedestrians and bicycles. A transformation of the economy as well, uh, digital uh, transition of the eco economy, but also circularity. Uh, and different levels of scale of thinking and acting, metropolization and globalization as, as part of the reality of cities today. And the way we do things more and more, I think, uh, necessary, inevitable, is to work with stakeholders to democratize uh, uh, the planning, which is, I think, uh, a challenge vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, the market approach that most cities also take. Can I have the next sheet, please? Uh, and this all... Uh, with addition of the corona crisis that I think binds us globally together. Next sheet, thank you very much. Um, so the next city, Generation City Visions in the Netherlands, I, I, I'm just having five questions and I hope that the, 
discussion of today will help at least me and hope all of us a little further in thinking about it. Which is the scale of acting and thinking? Is it a single skill uh, approach about cities or is it a multiple scale approach from metropolis, metro, metropolis to neighborhood? What kind of an agenda do we have in common? Is it an agenda based on growth, which I think is essential for big cities today, but you could also argue maybe that is not the most important thing. Sustainable development may be uh, key in the agenda, or maybe you have a much wider agenda still. What kind of a method do we take? Uh, is it still the, the scientific approach? Is it a democratic approach? Or is it a, a big data, data smart city approach? Uh, what kind of formal concepts do we use? Uh, is it for a, a primarily a spacious uh, approach or could we also add something about time and ch space uh, spatial strategies changing over time um, and last but not least uh, what kind of a general attitude do we take towards planning do we have uh, maybe a, a European perspective in common and then next sheet please can I have one more lead? Oh yeah, I, this, this is, I think, we cannot ignore the simple fact that we're uh, facing uh, our laptops and uh, smartphones now as we speak, rather than see each other in life. And this is all due to the, the big pandemic uh, that is uh, uh, hitting us uh, as human beings, but also as cities and as professionals today. Um, uh, and I'm very curious about uh, how every city is facing that challenge today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, I think it was uh, quite clear and quite crisp with the, uh, with the variation from what we used to do earlier and what we are doing now. Maybe it's, you already mentioned that it's a new time, that things are changing, there's a new planning paradigm already. But uh, I'm still hoping that we still need to improvise more. And how do we do that more? We find it out in these kind of uh, dialogues. And we hope to learn from you more in the uh, breakout session. Uh, we all know that we are running a bit behind. So uh, quickly, if somebody has any question for Eric, maybe uh shall should we pick up one question anybody wants to raise a hand or something there is a uh, option to raise hand and put up questions you you, you probably see my my email address so if you've yes of course uh, questions besides the the meeting that we're doing today uh, feel free of course. Okay, that's a great thing. Uh, as I mentioned in Paul Lecroix uh, uh, after his uh, uh, presentation as well, that I'll put up the book for everybody. And similarly, I will exchange the uh, email address of Eric if any re other city representative or any of our audience have any particular question, please send it to them. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, before we move out to the next thing, uh, Last chance for any one question. Do we pick up one question? No. Okay, Paul, Paul Gerritsen, do you want to say something? And well, I think, no, I think we should uh, continue. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's difficult to have these moments of interaction, but I think we should try to use the chat a little bit uh, more often. Also during the talk, you can just uh, post your thoughts, then, um, then we can pick that up also in the subsession now. So I just want to encourage you to do that. Yeah. So uh, maybe uh, I can introduce a bit uh, to all of you about the review sessions that we were talking about. Uh, in this uh, in, in next one hour, we will be all divided into groups of uh, 15 to 20 people each group. Now we have 80 participants in total. So, uh, so yeah, around uh, 20 people per group will be there. Uh, we have divided the groups in terms of pairing up and grouping some cities. And uh, 
based on their vision making process and the challenges that they are facing the first uh, the first uh, uh, city uh, uh, the first city group that we have is amsterdam and uh, amsterdam and zurich the second one is uh, rotterdam utrecht and oslo the third one is the hague and leon and the fourth one is eindhoven and helsinki uh, we will have moderators in each session my colleagues from delta metropol are helping to moderate these sessions and we have some volunteers from tu delft who will be helping us in this breakout rooms uh, coming to the first breakout room uh, we as i already mentioned that uh, uh, amsterdam and zurich is the first one uh, the first city pair has been grouped to discuss more the economical and the political parameters of decision making in the city vision development process these are the two largest cities of netherlands and zurich and always has a spotlight on them and needs special attention so we have in this session martin nefs who will be moderating the session with help from keltum uh, for to support with the technicalities from zurich we have anna schindler as uh, uh, the guests as the city representative one technical thing i want to point out here uh, i am unable to find out the name of uh, uh, anna schindler maybe you can just unmute, unmute yourself and just say hi once so that i put you in the right breakout room yes hi i'm here i'm not it's not possible for me to change my name because it's a city account uh, okay. one minute i'm trying to see if i can still see you here so yes. you're with the name of local admin right no yeah s t e s c a yes okay 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 great that's me okay great uh okay that works for me uh and from city of amsterdam we already had eric but eric i am hoping he would be joining i know that he has some other meeting in between to leave but i let's see till how far he can join the breakout room then we have dagmar keen and frank van den uh, balken uh, who are working more with the environmental vision for the city of amsterdam uh for the next uh, uh, city group we have rotterdam utrecht and oslo these are the three cities having a stronger focus towards the uh, towards urban healthy living and having a relation with the regional scale so these are they are facing the similar challenges under these themes and the session will be moderated by aryan me uh, aryan smiths and reen pandewal with a helping hand by surbi from oslo we have peter austin from uh, rotterdam we have khabar everyat i think he is here i uh, i uh, i'm not sure i could not find with the right name again then we have dries zimmerman we have marco den hayer and we have john de rauter from utrecht we have joost van fassen and uh, case varshur uh case uh, for you as well it goes the same i could not find you with the right name i hope you are there in the right session uh for the third breakout room uh it's uh, leon and the hague uh both the cities are uh, in the same stage of vision making process they are assessing the scenarios and building up the right research to provide the strong foundation to the vision so they are going to learn from each other what kind of scenarios they are building up and how they are including the uh, societal partners and citizens more into a participatory planning uh this session will be moderated by david duk and uh, uh, also it's good to mention that he is already working uh, on leon as a case study for his phd so he has really good knowledge and hopefully he will also able to learn more from them uh this will be supported by vera lofs and from leon we have uh, sebastian roland and claire bosset from hague from the hague we have daniel ridwogen marcel wiermans and evelyn cox uh the last uh, uh, fourth session we have with eindhoven and helsinki these are the cities which are more technologically aware and working with the topics of brain port and smart city ideas and they are struggling with the densification approaches 
So this session would be moderated by Anna Luisa Mora and Lea Soret and supported by Thomas. From Helsinki, we have Kristina Suomi and uh, Niklas Alto. And from Eindhoven, we have Solonge Bekman and Bregge Somers. Uh, I would like to mention here, I am uh, having some doubts uh, uh, from uh, Bregge Somers. I'm not sure, Bregge, if you're here in the uh, talk, please say hello to us because I could not find you in the list of participants with the right name. I really hope that you're there. Okay, let's see how it goes in the breakout room. So I will, uh, so all of us now will be divided into four sessions. Uh, less than an hour, I would say we planned it for an hour, but because we are a bit late, we would do it less than an hour. And uh, we make sure to take a break of five minutes after the session and come back for the last 20 minutes of conclusion for today's meeting. And uh, let's bring a drink with us when we are meeting for conclusion. Okay, thank you so much. I'll uh, ask everybody to join the breakout room now. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. I'm just going okay, to hello. quickly check who is here. See hey. can start. Yeah, I think we're all here. Anna Schindler, are you here in the room? I don't think so. Anna, could you could you say if you're in the room? From Zurich? She's not here, I don't see her. Not here, huh? This, no. I think uh, Anna Krita is still trying to put her... Yeah, reroute her through the... Yeah. yeah. So let's take uh, one minute for that. Hey, Martin, I think Anna should be here now. Yes, I saw her appearing right now. Yes. Thank you. Thank yes. you, Alan Krita. I'm here. Sorry, I have been in the wrong room. Yes, sorry, sorry. I think it's a mess up with the, uh, it's my fault. Sorry. No, it's cool. Continue. It's cool. I'm fine. Okay. Good. Uh, now we're all here. Thank you. Uh, welcome at the, the session of uh, Amsterdam and Zurich. We're going to be focusing on the, rela the relation between vision and decision making in cities. Uh, my name is Merten Neffs. I work as a researcher at uh, Delta Metropolis Association in Rotterdam. Um, and this uh, session is about uh, learning from one city to another. It's a peer-to-peer, -peer, so um, let's also be sharp and critical, but uh, without uh, losing touch of like being constructive. Um, I, I think it could be really interesting, uh, this session. Um, I, I looked through some material beforehand and also uh, with the talk of, uh, of Paul Lacroix and um, Eric Pasveer, I think we have two very challenging uh, cities in this session. Uh, first of all, I think the, um, some main challenges that uh, Zurich is working on at the moment of uh, what is the new economy, what we will live on, how do we maintain quality of life and how do we organize ourselves uh, are things that typically also um, 
questions are raised in, in Amsterdam as well. Um, Zurich, uh, I think, was rather stable in the last economic crisis, got off really well. Uh, Amsterdam, I think, made a, a bit of an economic change in there. Um, the financial uh, part of the city kind of dropped down and tourism and other sectors flourished. Um, so that's an interesting difference, maybe. Um, and both, I think, cities have to do also with the threat of uh, businesses being squeezed out of mixed-use areas because of the, um, the land prices. So I think there's a lot of things we could talk about. Um, also, in Paul Lacroix's meeting, he had, a, uh, he had some very challenging problems, he said, like uh, the, uh, the cities as drug addicts for energy people and other things. So that's, that's something we could discuss. Um, also, uh, the cities in other parts of the world are really growing. Uh, in Africa, the, the southeast of, of Asia, which means that Europe, European cities are actually being dwarfed uh, in, the, in the new world will, will be very tiny. What does that mean? Um, how do we relate? And of course, we also work on new infrastructures for biking uh, and green systems. I think both cities are really working on that and also working on new types of city collaborations. So uh, that means strategies and action plans. Um, first of all, I think uh, we have a short round of introduction between uh, the two cities. Uh, but before we do that, um, I would like to set out the, the outline of the session. First, we're going to have a dialogue between the two cities. Um, so, um, Amsterdam and Zurich, uh, with input also from uh, from questions that we have uh, and um, from the from the other side, and the last twenty minutes of the session will be having interaction with the audience. Um, please also raise your questions in the chat box on the on the right side. Um, then, um, Kaltum, my uh, friend who is uh, from the Tier Delft, will will uh, gather these questions. Are you here, Uncle Tum? Yes, I am here. Yes, <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. Uh, can you show yourself briefly? Yeah. Up uh, here, okay. Th thank you for uh, being here and helping us out today. Yeah. So you'll be gathering the questions for the discussion okay. and you'll also be taking notes so we can report back to the, to the plenary session again in the end. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, the, the five last minutes of the session will will wrap up with some uh, some one-liners and uh, lessons learned. All right. So um, I think uh, Erik Pasveer in uh, in his keynote speech already made a uh, yeah a good start of introducing Amsterdam and the Netherlands. Um, something I found interesting is that he um, he also mentions that this new Corona crisis will. Uh, make cities uh, think of how to plan uh, in a new light. Um, maybe we can also, uh, things got a bit messy right now, but at the same time, we can reach back to a tradition that we have uh, as uh, far as health and hygiene being main drivers be uh, behind city planning and how we do things for, uh, for on the long term. So I would like uh, actually Anna Schindler to start um, introducing Zurich by reacting on um, on this statement of the planning in Corona times in post post Corona times. So, um, yes. and then after that, um, Amsterdam can introduce. So Anna Schindler, could I ask you to, yes. uh, to react on what Eric Pasveer said and yes. Um, yes. introduce yes. Zurich in about five minutes. Okay, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Um, as you see, I'm working at home office with a nice view on Zurich, so um, this is like one thing. I think Zurich, um, I don't know I, um, if Zurich will need a different, a different way of planning after the corona crisis. I think for the most, most important thing right now is how we get out of this economic crisis, because there will be another one. It has already started. You, you were right that we were, we were um, quite lucky in the last one, the financial crisis in 2008. And I don't know if we will be as lucky um, this time because we have a lot of small businesses, um, we have a lot of startups, we have a lot of, of also of the financial world 
that is um, not doing so well right now. We are taking a lot of measures against that. Um, let's see, because the economic um, basis is like the most important fundamental basis for, for any city. We are a growing city um, still, and we will still be growing even if we um, didn't have anybody, if we didn't have a lot of uh, people arriving in the last months. We've made a comparison between uh, last year and right now. It's, it's of course because borders are closed, but we are depending very much on people, on foreigners coming um, um, out of Europe to Zurich, workforces. Um, we, are, we, we have a lot of high skilled workers. We need them also. Um, and I think this is, this is still the reason because um, why Zurich is growing. We have made um, us the only city in Zurich a structural plan on the, on the municipal level, as on the city level. And in this plan, um, we are trying to, to show where the city can still grow because um, it's, it's limited to its, its um, boundaries, it's limited to its borders. We don't have any, any land anymore, any brownfields anymore. So we are really forced to, to grow where there's already built. And then we have made a structural plan on, on the municipal level showing where to grow, how we will deal with uh, green spaces and how we will deal with, with traffic and mobility uh, in the future. And I think it's for the first time that we really still in still um, on in in the in inside the borders of the city but that we are really dealing with the different needs and that we are negotiating between the different departments what can be done and what cannot be done and i think one thing to to um to finish it will change planning um after corona maybe is the use of public space because we have seen how important public space is and needs to be and has to do a lot also with uh, health and, and hygiene and um, I think we have to reconsider our visions of public space after uh, hopefully soon when the crisis will be over. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, how about uh, the session of today? What, is your, what do you want to get out of it uh, as a city? You're the head of uh, planning in Zurich. So what, what do you try to, uh, to learn from Amsterdam? Actually, I'm not the head of planning. I'm, and this is so. This is by uh, no, no. I am director of development. This means a lot of has a lot okay. to do with economic development, with use, with housing, um, and with integration. And um, what I'm really interested in is to hear about Amsterdam and to exchange, and also about the other cities and to exchange ideas because we have done that a lot in the last weeks with other cities about Corona crisis, about what we do, about our measures. And I think it's very important that cities. Um, have this exchange because cities are the real, the real places to be. Actually, are the real, the real um, actors in this whole game. Okay, thank you very much. Um, who can I ask from the city of Amsterdam to to introduce um, their vision and their um, question for today? Uh, we have, I think, uh, Erik Pasveer, if he's still here. We have. Dagmar Keim, European Policy Advisor, Sustainable and Urban Development in Amsterdam, and Frank van den Beuken, Project Manager, Environmental Vision, City of Amsterdam. Who, who can yes. I give the floor? And we have Enno Abel. Also here. Welcome. Good that you're here. Um, who would like to, to introduce your city? Hello, I'm uh, Hello. Frank van den Beuken. I, I can introduce uh, some Issues. I also have uh, a few uh, a few uh, sheets uh, prepared. Is it possible to share? Um, yes, you can share with uh, the green button in the bottom of your screen. Is this? Um, do you see the introduction sheet? Thank yes. you. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Nice to be here. Uh, I'm Frank van der Beuken, uh, project, project manager uh, of this uh, new urban vision uh, for Amsterdam. Um, uh, the idea of this vision is that we, uh, yeah, we will uh, approve this in, in next year, in 2021. Uh, and it's, uh, as uh, Erik Pas here has, has told, it's, it's a more comprehensive uh, vision and plan 
than the previous structural visions we used to have in, in, in Holland. Uh, and especially in Amsterdam, we have this tradition of making visions. And the last one, uh, Erik Pasveer also mentioned, was the structural vision Amsterdam 2040. It, uh, uh, it's from 10 years ago at about. Um, and now we, need, we really need a new vision. And uh, that's not only because uh, the, the, the national government uh, says every, every uh, municipality has to make a new vision, but it's also because the old one is, is uh, not, not ac accurate anymore. Um, and that has to do with uh, two main courses, uh, the, the fast growth of the city in the last 10 years. Uh, it, 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 Amsterdam really uh, is, is ch changed, uh, uh, not only because of the tourists uh, that are still a few months ago uh, came to Amsterdam, but uh, the, the, uh, the, the city is, is growth with uh, jobs and, and uh, housing. Uh, and uh, the other functions are, are also, we have, of course, we have invest in, 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 in green uh, development, in uh, um, the uh, public transport, but it's lacking. It's, it's not enough. Uh, and and pe people see that, it, it's, that the city becomes, sometimes there's too much pressure on the city. And of course, we, we also face new challenges. Now, they are already mentioned. Um, so we, we are really questioning the, this fundamental question, what sort of city wants, do we want to be? Uh, and what, how do we work on this city together? Yeah, it's, uh, we want to, to work on the city in a more democratic way. I think the, the main challenge, uh, of course, is, is the uh, climate change. And uh, luckily, we, we are all, uh, as cities in Europe, part, part of a larger mo movement. Uh, I know Switzerland is not part of the EU, but I hope uh, Zurich uh, wants to be part of this movement. Uh, movement. I, I, I'm curious how you look at this, uh, this development. Uh, and I think it's interesting because the EU uh, points out that, that this transition is not only about uh, uh, energy uh, transition, it's, it's also changing the economy. And it's, it will also change our cities. And Amsterdam is uh, uh, trying to, to um, uh, yeah, make this workable uh, by using the, the donut model of Kate Rayworth. Um, and of course, it's, it's, uh, we, we it's not all... Um, uh, we are we are not ready to 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 uh, act, but uh, it's in an interesting way to look at the, the future of of the city and to to be responsible not only for your citizens but also be responsible for the world. And uh, to use this donut model, it 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 shows how it uh, what what you need to um, yeah to to develop your city with respect to the health of the whole planet. Um, and now we try to uh, yeah, make it, uh, uh, try to, to, to translate it to city development. But we have also uh, other issues uh, for our uh, urban vision. Um, one thing also already pointed out, uh, it's, it's about this development that, that Amsterdam more and more is becoming a bigger metropolis uh, and is more integrating on a, a regional scale. That's not a new thing, but um, the last years the functional integration is becoming stronger. Citizens already uh, functioning on this on this level, uh, and new issues have to deal with also on this regional uh, level. 
so in our vision, we try to strengthen the approach uh, of this uh, yeah, metropolitan development. And at the same time, uh, people in Amsterdam, the citizens, uh, they have their concerns. Uh, uh, they um, feel yeah, not always at home in their own city because of the many developments the city has faced uh, last years. And maybe also because of the, the uncertainties of the future. So we have to uh, make a vision that, that uh, um, give trust to the people that, uh, that Amsterdam can develop in a more, we, we call it more rooted way. Um, what do we mean by rooted urbanity? Well, it's about the idea that entrepreneurs and residents are part of the process of, of uh, neighborhood development. Uh, and it's also about the sense of place uh, that, that, that places uh, will develop more spe specific and not in a, in a generic way. Um, uh, a big issue in Amsterdam is also affordable housing, affordable living. Uh, it's not all only housing, but also affordable workspaces. Uh, and that's uh, also a, a fundamental issue because uh, it's, it's not only about uh, building enough uh, housing, uh, it's also, we also need a new model for value creation. Um, and uh, maybe we need to find also more uh, alternative for developer-led housing. So we're searching to, to deal with this. And of course, um, Amsterdam uh, is, is, uh, is uh, we, and this vision, we, we try to co-create it with, with uh, people and organizations uh, in the city and in the region. And we want to be a, a co-creating city. And this is a, an important movement in Amsterdam. Uh, for example, we have uh, the We Make the City Festival uh, every year, uh, where we celebrate uh, how uh, to, to uh, to, to co-produce uh, and co uh, and uh, to work together on, on, on uh, difficult urban challenges. And I think it's going, growing bigger and bigger. Uh, so what the issues we, we, we want to discuss here, and it, I think it's, um, uh, it fits in the, the, the issues uh, Eric Paspe earlier mentioned um, is are three things. Uh, the first one is, is this make bigger movement of the Green Deal and how we can, uh, part of that as, as a European Green cities and, and, and contribute to, to each other. Uh, so I'm curious how the city of Zurich uh, uh, looks at this movement. Uh, the second one is uh, the, the, the question how to gain trust of citizens in this uh, bigger development uh, on uh, urban and regional scale uh, to um, prove that, that, that we are making the city real, yeah, more green and more social inclusive. Uh, and the last one is, uh, uh, yeah, we have this movement of uh, democratization, uh, bottom up on uh, development, uh, but we have also issues we have to uh, plan top down, like new uh, infrastructure, uh, energy uh, structures, uh, landscape, uh, and we're looking how to combine these two uh, uh, approaches. So I hope this uh, uh, gives a short insight of our uh, thinking in our, uh, of our new urban vision. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Um, yeah. Um, Anna, uh, do you already have a first uh, reflection on uh, what you just saw from uh, Amsterdam? I mean, um, the growing pains, uh, I think, are very recognizable in, in both cities, probably, and to reconcile that with uh, sustainability as an aim. Um, do you also, also in Zurich look for new models like Amsterdam does in terms of, for example, this donut economy. 
Is that something you work on? Um, not in the same way. I think we are looking for new models. In another way, I am speaking about maybe the first question you were asking about this uh, Green Deal in Europe. We are not part of Europe, as he, as he has said, and actually due to Corona, um, all these negotiations have been a bit um, postponed. This is not good. It's not good for neither for Zurich, neither for Switzerland, but actually we have the same issues and then we are very much into changing also the economy and planning it in them um, with green visions. Where, um, meaning that we, we would like to have it to be like a CO2 neutral in um, 10 years, not even 10 years, maybe this goal is too ambitious, but they actually have, we, we are undergoing a lot of um, also in planning, we are doing a lot of um, a lot of, of ideas. There are a lot of ideas for um, better climate in the in the city because we have we are uh, presenting a new master plan on uh, heat reduction. I think this week or next week that we finished and this big issue in the city. And um, there's too, there's much heat in the summer. We need more green spaces. So we are really working on on all these uh, issues in the planning on the planning basis and in, in with planning methods, but also um, by regulations or um, in our direct democratic system by laws. And then um, the second point to um, to remain a city for everyone is actually what you said to to remain a socially and uh, and then um, economically um, integrated city. I think um, besides Vienna, that was, has been mentioned before in the in the um, introductory statements, I think Zurich is the city in Europe with the longest housing, affordable housing tradition ever. Because um, we, um, we are following, we are working with the cooperatives and we are working on affordable housing, really affordable housing. It's almost about 30% of all our market, housing market since um, like 110 years. So it's a long tradition and I think it's very, very important um, program, we have a whole program, policy program about housing. I think it's one of the most important um, programs also for for um, a sustainable city, a socially sustainable city. And there is also a lot of yeah, a lot of um, projects and um, discussion going on. Thank you. Uh, these are all kinds of uh, regulation and other top-down things you're mentioning, like strategies. No, um, it's not. It's not just top down because we had also a lot of participation. You know, it's not top down in a way that in Switzerland with the direct democracy, um, all these things that I have I've, um, spoken about right now are formally have been formally requested by the people. So there have always been rotations on it uh, for the 2000 Watt Society, for the structural plan, for the housing oh. program. So this is actually not very much top down. It's okay. It never is. I think in a system like the Swiss system, it never is that top down as in other countries. This is um, some speciality of ours. Yes. Uh, I, I noticed that before, um, uh, Frank or, or Dagmar, could, could you uh, reflect on that a little bit? Because I think uh, the points that you made about uh, being rooted in your place and your community and also um, uh, trying to stimulate co-creation and, uh, and trust, uh, would, would the Swiss way actually work for, for Amsterdam? Swiss way of, uh, of participation and democracy. Um, I think uh, Amsterdam is, is uh, experimenting with uh, sort of direct uh, democracy, but it's, it's also, of course, about tradition. So you, you can't implement this at once. On the other hand, uh, Holland and also Amsterdam has a long to do. Every, uh, every municipality got its own alderman, got its own parties and stuff like that. And they also want to score every time, eh, as politics does in general. Um, and that sometimes doesn't even uh, 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 the urge to uh, uh, collaborate or to see what... what um, uh, what you got to do to make a region stronger than uh, maybe the municipality itself. Uh, and we face that in housing, for example. Um, um, it's not only in the typology of housing, but also the, uh, uh, the amount. So how many does this really get and how many that and how many does it have, for example. Uh, the cost that, or at least the benefits that comes also with housing and working, do you share that together or is it just simply, and, and I think that's also, question that Oslo and uh, its surroundings 
have maybe themselves. Uh, and also the, uh, the amount of uh, um, at least effort and money you have to put in uh, uh, transportation, mobility, and uh, see if you can come to the same vision as we want to do is that we want to uh, have as much development around uh, knots, uh, so public public transport, but maybe more city-wise not, uh, knots. So it, and that's not only housing, and that's not only mobility, but it's also uh, facilities that's uh, very, it's got a high social impact. It's also uh, the start for social transformation and also for mobility transformation. Uh, well, I think, so we got a, maybe a couple of similarities in here, uh, I, th I think, and we face a couple of, so, and we also face with maybe uh, uh, the, the same challenges, or we at least we got the same challenges in there. Um, there's one other, other thing, and I'm very curious also for uh, both Rotterdam uh, as Oslo that have, uh, uh, what defines a region? And uh, now we define a region with the 16 municipalities we have, but for example, uh, 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 air pollution or water or uh, landscape or uh, most of the transportation doesn't know anything about uh, uh, boundaries uh, or at least political uh, uh, governmental boundaries. Um, so, how do you face that 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 question too? Um, I'm not really sure if uh, if uh, for uh, Oslo, for example, if Barum is in here, is and if Barum is not in here, it's in the vicinity of Oslo, and how do you? And there's a lot of traffic going there. Uh, so so how? No, yeah. At least we're facing that a lot. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe uh, someone from Rotterdam. Uh can uh, respond to that. How do you cope with uh, the, the concept of the region and how do you include this in your, your city vision uh, making process? What's your role in there? Well, maybe Dries and uh, Gabor can add uh, to my comments. Uh, uh, the, the last question is quite interesting. What's, what's the region? Uh, uh, I guess every subject has its own regional uh, uh, um, rational behind it. I mean, if, if uh, Rotterdam is an economic region, maybe we have Dordrecht and, and Rotterdam and uh, more around uh, the river system. And in terms of uh, the, the urban growth, uh, we are really uh, closely connected to, to, to the De Haag uh, uh, Rotterdam region. So it's an interesting question. Um, in our situation, uh, we are part of a formal region, uh, the metropolitan area Rotterdam De Haag. I think it consists of something like 23 uh, municipalities. Uh, it has no formal role in uh, spatial planning. It's, uh, it's, its main subjects are uh, uh, transport and uh, economic, uh, uh, economic field. Uh, um, but what was kind of interesting to, to see in the last couple of years that a, a couple of uh, municipalities uh, around our public transport system uh, started a, a coalition of municipalities really uh, uh, developing a strategy of, of uh, sustainable growth uh, connected to this public transport system. So maybe the lack of a regional authority on this field uh, led to a, a standing up of uh, several municipalities, around six, which were, uh, which were having the same uh, uh, need for uh, uh, combined growth around this public transport system. Uh, and that developed into a close cooperation between the province, the metropolitan areas, the municipalities and the, and the national scale. Also because of uh, funding, was, uh, uh, we are partly uh, dependent on, on, on public funding from the national government. Uh, uh, so it's, there was a kind of uh, interesting uh, uh, development in, an, in, in, in our region that uh, municipalities started to cooperate uh, on its own in a kind of an alliance uh, uh, to, uh, together. Uh, address also the need for uh, growth in mobility uh, and sustainable growth uh, uh, and, and find each other on this uh, on this subject. So that's basically uh, our trees. Yeah, Maybe, yeah I, I was thinking about that example as well because um, Peter, I, I found your uh, story really interesting, um, but it sounded quite, uh, let's say, top down. Um, I don't know if this is really the case. Uh, of course, these negotiations, as you said, are very political um, and the interesting thing about the uh, municipalities along a railway line um, themselves coming together and almost organically or bottom-up let's say 
making an offer to uh, the higher uh, um, authorities um, was actually, I think, really interesting in, in the Netherlands as a, as a sort of case how, how municipalities can together take control as well. You want to react, Peter? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting comment. It's a fair comment, I think. Um, it, it, this relates to the the way uh, responsibilities are allocated to the different levels of government, of course. Uh, the main corporation across our metropolitan area, as I said, actually from the early 1990s, was uh, on transportation. Oslo and Akershus uh, set up a, a joint transport funding agency, which is using toll uh, road tolls around the whole city, as you probably know, uh, it's generating 300 million euros every year when the when when the roads are working. I mean, at the moment, they're not, but this is a, an unusual situation. Uh, uh, but that has been a very strong basis for collaboration at the regional scale. The municipalities are not involved; they have no responsibility for public transport. But they are land use planning authorities, and we have always, at the regional level, been concerned to. Uh, encourage the municipalities to build in the right place. <laughs> uh, but of course the landowners locally they have other ideas and uh, people like their big uh, spaces in the gardens and, and it, it doesn't always work. So, but but the, the politics has always been pointing in a, this direction since the 1990s, a long time, the, the land use policy at the national level and, and it's been written in all the local plans but in the end the, the result in the market has, has been something else. So what we have achieved now uh, and this came actually in 2008 first by a government decree. The government uh, put a proposal to parliament which approved it to say that the Oslo and Akershus region should produce a joint regional plan for land use and transport. So it was actually a, an instruction from the national level only in our region to produce a joint regional plan. Uh, and, and as soon as it was started, of course, the authorities are sitting around the table ever said, well, this is a good idea. Why didn't we think of it ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> but maybe they wouldn't have done. I mean, I, we've, been, we've been talking about it for 10, 20 years already, but it, it didn't happen. Uh, but in fact, look, at it, historically, it's very interesting. I, I loved one of the maps that uh, Eric was showing, this 1935 map. In fact, we have a, a, a very similar plan handing, it, handing in our office from 1934, very, very similar, which was produced for the Oslo region, uh, the same kind of scale, the same concept, the same kind of statistics. And then 40 years after that, in 1974, a regional uh, document was produced, and then 40 years later, we have a regional plan today. So there's a kind of a, uh, a contrative cycle of 40 years between each regional plan. I, I have no idea why. <laughs> <laughs> maybe some, maybe something to do with Corona. I have no idea. <laughs> maybe. But it's uh, it's it, it's interesting. But in the end, the the success I would say of uh, what we have at the moment, whether it will last, I don't know. But the success in the end was we had a, a very wide support for the regional strategy from the twenty two municipalities. But this was because we had a very very good uh, participation process. The secretariat that was doing all the work, producing the documents and organizing meetings, they actually visited every municipality four times, meeting the, meeting the politicians during that period. So it was a massive exercise of uh, outreach discussions with local politicians. Uh, so at the end, no, no, no local politician could say they didn't understand this or they didn't know what it was or their ideas had never been uh, put forward because they, they, they could do that. Uh, in the end, compromises had to be found. There was the negotiations, and, and I think what we had fits really pretty well into most people. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. I think that that uh, clarifies it quite a lot. Um, I think it's good to move on to the next uh, focus point because we are actually already running short on time. It uh, goes quite quick in this video format. <laughs> uh, Rien, can you uh, take up the next point?
yeah. people can always uh, have a look at them and they should. Um, and we don't have so much time left. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, what actually, what maybe what my first question would be is to Den Haag, uh, seeing this uh, uh, um, example of, of methods, uh, um, mainly, uh, let's say, uh, would such a thing work also for uh, um, Den Haag, or do you think uh, uh, um, we tried this already, didn't work? Uh, what are your first ideas? I will open now as well, Eveline, as... Uh, uh, sorry, uh, everybody's changing content. <laughs> Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> Eveline, let's, uh, let's start with you. Well, uh, thank you uh, for your inspirational uh, uh, talk about the the way you uh, worked on the vision of the uh, metropolitan area of Lyon. This, this, um, this, well, the, I, I think this will be helpful as we are still looking for methods how to uh, how to uh, get the commitment of uh, the management. And uh, well, as the city of The Hague is quite a formal uh, organization. Um, it will be interesting to see if we can use more creative uh, ways of uh, uh, trying to get ideas on the table. Um, so, well, I wonder what my colleagues uh, will think about that because, I will, I would say I'll give it a try. Uh. <laughs> I could, I could add. Myself, please, yes. Yes, I could add to that. Um, thanks for the presentation and. Um, Yes, I do think it helps if you work with uh, different scenarios to uh, to broaden the discussion in the first place and to and to get people involved. It's one way which which could work very good, I think. Uh, very recently, in uh, in uh, the Netherlands, the National uh, Planning Bureau also has drawn up a number of scenarios which can be very useful for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there is another. Um, uh, way we uh, we used uh, for the agenda space for the city, which we developed three years ago. It could be seen, <coughs> sorry, as a kind of a prequel to the environmental vision we are making now. And in that um, uh, planning, uh, uh, we uh, we experimented with a different way, and we uh, we just uh, we had of course some. Um, uh, some developments we wanted uh, um, to put in the in the planning, uh, but we asked uh, for eight different uh, parts of the city, a group of uh, of uh, people, just random people. They could uh, uh, um, uh, put in uh, their names on a list, and then uh, they were uh, a kind of a, a stakeholder uh, uh, policy. Um, and uh, we uh, we gave them uh, the support of a couple of uh, of planners, and all those eight groups made up uh, their own plan for their part of the city. And then, in a in a general session, we brought them all together and let them discuss with with each other what they did and why they did it and what that meant for the whole city. And we could actually use very much of what of the main uh, items that came out of that discussion in the overall agenda we made up so it was a quite uh, a different way not by scenarios but just by what is necessary in your part of the city and can you discuss with your neighboring uh, um, uh, neighborhood how you can combine that and that also worked uh, pretty good. It was an agenda. It was not a real formal plan. Mm -hmm. The agenda, it worked pretty good. What I like about it is that uh, in difference to what is now the, the environmental vision is that you get teams and you come on, this is the list, you work with it. Whereas the, the example of uh, Lyon and also the latest example of the Hague is, uh, this is your neighborhood, what do you need? Uh, so the the the... the, the, the um, the uh, assignments actually come up, uh, whereas otherwise you, you get them on their plate mm -hmm. and you have to start working. Where mm -hmm. uh, what I like also a bit what you said uh, uh, earlier, Evelyn, like 
we get all these things, but where's our inspiration? Uh, uh, and, uh, and I like a bit what, what the inspiration coming from uh, Lyon. Uh, but at the same time, I, I want to ask back to Lyon, like, uh, and, and, and now you have all this inspiration. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you get to uh, a plan again? How do you uh, are able to make it uh, uh, tangible? Mm -hmm. um, so so uh, uh, that's the, the, the next step. Uh, we, are, we are getting um, into it. Well, in, in this weird period, it's kind of uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. difficult, but uh, because once again, we, we don't know uh, what's going to be the, the governance of, uh, of uh, if we scale of planning. So it can really change the way we work uh, according if it's, uh, um, uh, there's uh, four or five candidates that can be, uh, I mean, uh, at the, at the leading the, the city and the metropole. So now what we do is more to identify um, what kind of action will be, um, um, will have a leverage effect on each uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, whether um, the, the, the leader, tomorrow leaders will uh, say, well, I don't want to, this universe to happen, never. So how do you get it away from me? <laughs> So mm -hmm. that's the, the work we, we, will, we are doing now. Um, and probably, um, well, the, 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 the hard part of our work is um, for the city of Lyon, for instance, there's no power of uh, deciding. It's Metropole de Lyon and the scale above. As it's how each strategy will articulate which, with the strategy of the neighbors. That's, uh, as, as I uh, mentioned at the beginning of the, the presentation, is um, I'm curious to, to know how Den Haag uh, managed to articulate different planning from region, region to city. Uh, is it easy? Is it um, uh, fluid? Or is, um, because for us, uh, it's quite, um, it's quite um, a stake to, uh, to articulate uh, different scale uh, and what we are doing now from since uh, 2025 uh, uh, is a informal uh, discussion between elected peoples but tomorrow I'm pretty sure we will need more than informal for uh, planning with consistency from region to the city. I have a question so there is no metropolitan board in Lyon? There is a metropolitan board right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that was a question from uh, Ivan Lee. Uh, okay. Um, that, that difference from the Netherlands. Eh? Uh, in, in the Hague region, there is not a not a metropolitan board. There's just yeah. a board, but it's only for uh, for the uh, transport authority. So okay. It has no, nothing to say about uh, the other uh, on housing or green or uh, economy. Only okay. a little bit. So yeah. that's really different. We have. A scattered kind of uh, regional uh, uh, cooperation, very scattered. Yeah, yeah. Well, just to make it clear, because the word uh, metropolitan is kind of tricky for us. Mm -hmm. uh, Metropole de Lyon is only uh, fifty-nine uh, municipalities, and when you look at the metropolitan phenomenon, it's way larger than fifty-nine uh, municipalities. So there's not there's a metropolitan board for the fifty-nine, but for the five hundred, that has to do with us having a quite well of course we have a lot of uh like the official the parliament and all a lot of these different uh, embassy or uh, like parts of the government is located in helsinki and that's why we get a lot of tax money that way but we have also a lot of private companies and we get a lot of tax money that way and we can invest it back in our city and we do invest most of like we are the mindset of helsinki at the moment is that we need to invest in our city so that we can keep on having uh, the functioning city that we have now since a lot of headquarters a lot of businesses and a lot of educated people uh, who are like they demand quite a lot from a city nowadays if you look at in the states the competition to get for example a google headquarters or a subsidiary headquarters or something like that the cities have to put a lot of lot like into developing their city and that's something that we as a city have recognized we have to be able to 
compete with not, not the Finnish cities, but let's say Stockholm or Amsterdam or Wainat Eindhoven. Or I mean, we are not competing inside of Finland. We're competing with the rest of Europe and the rest of the world. And that's a tough competition since we're quite far away from everyone else. That's really interesting. Maybe with the three minutes we have left, um, I do have some conclusion kind of questions that I would like to like to ask you to both uh, Eindhoven and Helsinki is that we obviously uh, observe that with the principles and the strategy that you are having both there are some complementary things but also new things that could even you could eventually bring home and if so what are those? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I could try to bring, take out of this discussion and bring to my colleagues and and in the city administration also is that uh, we need to be more open. I think what we have been trying to copy from the Netherlands for quite a while is like the openness of how how you guys do it there, and we need like towards the public and. I, I mean, we do a lot of public participation and so on. It's in our legislation, but it's not somehow in our DNA, maybe. We, we do it because we kind of have to do it, but we, we should become more more positive towards and then we are we, we are doing that, but we that's something we still need to work on a lot. So you would say that those kind of international dialogue or comparison are really helpful to figure out new ways yeah. of working or structuring the urban developments? Yes, yes, we need, we, like, we like to benchmark Stockholm quite often, but we need to benchmark other cities social than Stockholm. For example, Copenhagen and Amsterdam and so on. And we are doing that, but we need to maybe be a bit more efficient with it. And then could that be then a next step when it comes to both decision or vision making for your own city at the moment? Yeah, I mean, learn from the best and try to cut the learning curve. So I'd say we are part of, for example, this one EU funded cycling project and uh, we have Copenhagen as our mentor and Amsterdam is one part of that project also and so on. So we're trying to skip a lot of the mistakes that they've done and try to like implement good things direct because we have the possibility to learn from other people's mistakes. So that's what we're trying to do. But on a larger scale, when it comes to strategic planning, we should be able to do that also, like pick the cherries from everyone's desserts and apply them to Helsinki. Very clear. I'm really sorry I have to cut sharp. We have a few seconds left. So please don't leave the meeting, but cut No, Elvis Elf didn't speak yet. I know. I know. But I saw... Uh, go for it, Els. Go, go. I, I think we go to Helsinki uh, next trip. We should go with colleagues to see how you do it there and, uh, and see the environment. Because I read about it a lot today, but uh, I've never been there, so I'm very curious now. Yeah, just let us know if you want to come yeah. after this t <laughs> COVID times are over and we'll show you around for sure. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Leah and Annalisa, can I add something in between? Yeah. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Nicholas, same as Els mentioned, we are all excited now to visit Helsinki. I think we all should try and make a trip for uh, the new planning dialogue as well. We were anyhow planning to do that with demos. I think Alexei Nubron mm -hmm. uh, is present here. We were in discussion with Kaisa uh, Smith from demos regarding that trip. But maybe it would be nice uh, to actually plan it in upcoming times after the pandemic situation and so that we can learn some more. Uh, yes, we, we please. Can, yeah, we can take maybe two, three minutes more if else wants to add something. Great. Yeah, so oh. maybe... Uh, I'm, I'm just adding that, that that's still on our agenda. So yes, I am Alex. Exactly. Uh, you are all welcome whenever that time seems to be again suitable. Definitely. Thank uh, you, Alexi. Else, to, 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 to remind you, uh, Leo, Leo, do you want to rapidly yeah. remind Else about the key questions? Yeah, the first key yeah. question was uh, if there is something you would take from Helsinki as being complementary to your approach or, on the other hand, different or new? That was the first one. Uh, well, yeah, I see a lot of, compare of uh, uh, things that we do uh, we deal together with it. So I'm just uh, uh, curious about uh, yeah, to get a level uh, lower to, to know more about uh, 
about the techno technical regions and how how you uh, uh, work on that. But uh, uh, yeah, I didn't hear it that yet, but I'm very curious about that. So um, and the uh, and the struggles you say about uh, networking with uh, uh, public transport and uh, stuff like that. You also deal with that. But I know that you've got already a metro and trams in uh, Helsinki and we don't have that in Eindhoven because we don't have the mass. Uh, of, we don't have enough uh, people uh, who would uh, use uh, it. So yeah, we're struggling with that. So yeah, maybe you can help us with that. <laughs> yeah. And that's good. And then, then it comes directly to the question of and such an international dialogue like we're having today would be then something you would imply in your uh, vision making process or it, could it be a new working method that you would imply? Um, well, I don't know. Now, but uh, maybe later. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but can, does it seem realistic? Or? A new uh, a new strategy for our city. Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, we don't have to um, 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 let's say it don't have the space to uh, put new things on our vision now, but the second vision you're going to make, there's a lot of uh, place, uh, space for new uh, ideas. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I don't know, don't know yet, but uh, there's, there's a lot of things to, um, uh, to think about it. What I heard now from Helsinki, but also from other can learn from other cities, I think. So, yeah. Uh, next time I'm gonna make a uh, vision for the city uh, should be uh, with more um, uh, knowledge from other cities how they deal with um, uh, uh, similar um, challenge we deal. Mm. So that that that, that um, yeah. That's now not only talk with our neighbors and our inhabitants, but also with other city who deal with the same challenge. That's a, that's a learning uh, point for me. Yeah, definitely. I think for most, most cities and vision making process, super important. We made it. We've finished on time, guys. <laughs> so I think we behaved very well. Thank you very much for your participation. It was super nice um, to hear from all of you. And uh, thank you, especially to our guests, of course. And I think, I don't know if we should leave this breakout room or if Alan Krita picks us up. Uh, no, normally no one's supposed to leave. They just turn uh, I will make sure that all of you return back to the session. But okay. maybe it's good for everybody to know that we take a five minutes break or something. Do not uh, uh, push any leave room or leave meeting, meeting button. We will come back to the main session in five minutes and we conclude it in last 20 minutes. Okay, so yeah. we now take, take all the five minutes break. Yes. Before we go. Okay. Yes. I'm switching off everybody's videos and audio so that you can get up from your chairs. Yeah? <laughs> Great. Thank you. Uh, everybody, we take a five minutes break and come back for the last 20 minutes to conclude the session. And we hope you get a glass of, uh, at least a glass of water to raise and we conclude the session in five minutes. Yeah. I'm switching off, unmuting everybody and switching off the videos. <coughs>
Okay, is everybody here, back? Yep. Great. Uh, thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the sessions, breakout rooms, and I hope you learned something from this session. Um, last 15 minutes, I promise, and then we go towards Friday evening. Uh, so maybe first thing is it would be nice that at the end we have all the faces. So please switch on your videos and then it's you, can... you need to do that. Uh, no, I already, I did that. I think each person can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Each person can do their own now. Nope. No, no, no. Now you have to do it. Okay. I'm trying. working now. No? No, not for me. Not for me. Mm. Yeah, mine work now. You can use uh, the banner on the, the downside of your uh, monitor, left hand side, you see uh, a video sign. If you click on that one, usually you will be in yeah, exactly. It should work like that. I don't think it should be with me to open the videos. Yeah, but I get the message. You cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. So here. So here. Um, Alankrita, you have to ask them to okay, start the video by one by one. I'm doing, that now. doing that. I'm okay. Hello. I am not on it. <laughs> I see nearly everyone. Mm -hmm. I don't see myself. Oh, wait, wait, I'm trying my best. There are 60 participants, so I'm doing one. Ah, by I have my video. Here I am. There you go. <laughs> Very joyful. Mm -hmm. Did I get everybody? Is somebody missing whose video? Yes, is Mr. Paul Lecroix is in? No, I'm not in. But are you? Where are you? I can see you, but you can't see me. I, I would like to uh, to congratulate you with your ah hello. It was uh, very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> and. Um, I'm very curious about the book, yeah. Okay, I think more or less I have everybody. Is there somebody missing? Please tell your name and then I find you and, uh, and switch on the video. Yeah, everybody. All you're muted. Yeah. Uh, did everybody have their videos now? Yes. Okay. There are still okay. some blank spaces on the third page. Yeah, but I ask them, it's up to them if they want to join or not. So I right. cannot force anybody to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I already notified them. Uh, but uh, okay, I hope that uh, everybody learned something. Shall we do a quick round of polls to see what we learned today? Super quickly, I'm giving that how, what did we learn from our peer, for, from this peer review? Still 10 person, yeah, nine, nine people left to push the button. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you see the results. Most of us think that uh, on a tactical level, the changes uh, fundamentally restructuring is needed. And we definitely need to exchange more knowledge with our peers. 
okay let's go to one quick last one about this current situation of pandemic and why we are doing this digitally so do we think that this is affecting the planning system and the decision making system um, in a good way bad way or i think uh, you have shared the wrong poll that's the same question as last yeah. time yeah can you should yeah yes Sorry. Let's relaunch the poll. Yeah, I'm myself now getting a bit confused with three different screens here. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the question is not right. No. No. Yes. I agree. You, you you shouldn't say in the first uh, bullet point. Yeah. Yes, it should function as a catalyst and will affect it a lot. And will I affect it. it a lot. It doesn't. It probably does not function as a catalyst, but it affects anyway a lot. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely, Yost. I uh, I hope everybody heard and maybe put the uh, answers in that way. Mm. And in that sense, I agree. It's yes. <laughs> okay. It's it's also going to going to affect the behavior of individuals. Yes. 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 True. True. And uh, yours, I think everybody, most of us, agrees with you with the first answer. Mm. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, thank you so much for this. Uh, uh, discussion that we had with the different cities. Uh, uh, the poll already says a lot about it. Uh, I went to each discussion, each breakout rooms for at certain moments for a few minutes and I could already understand the seriousness and intense discussion that was going on. It's actually a big task or it's almost next to impossible to get some solutions in one hour's time. I know that many people could not speak a lot and there are a lot of things still needs to be shared. Uh, I assure you that you will be receiving more elaborated results about this discussion and more about the cities in next couple of weeks from us. Anyhow, I would like to invite the moderators from each session to just give us one or two strong statements what you have learned. So I invite uh, Merton Neffs, I invite uh, David Took, Aryan Smiths, and Anna Luisa. Uh, can you unmute yourself and start saying, Merton, you go first? Yes. Shall I go first? Yes. Okay. Uh, we had a session with Amsterdam and Zurich uh, about uh, city visions and how to implement those in uh, decision making. Um, we had some, um, well, it's a, a, a broad statement. Uh, I would say that um, unlike the, the other financial crisis that led to all kinds of new system thinking about the economy, this new corona crisis gives rise to all, so, all sorts of questions that have to do with the public, the public part of the city. So we had a lot of talk about um, public space, about public transport, public health. Uh, and public uh, participation. Um, so that's, I think, uh, something really new. Um, and so some of the questions, for example, that are raised are, uh, what is the role of the planner uh, as a referee or some other function in this participatory process, uh, uh, trying to reconcile the, uh, the big scale planning with the bottom up initiatives. So how do we define this role? Another question that was raised was uh, about um, housing density and growth within a city, uh, not wanting to expand too much uh, in its boundaries, uh, combined with the, the issues of the crisis. So how can you be more flexible uh, and therefore safe uh, for people's health? Um, another, um, well, I, I didn't have time to ask the less uh, for the what the cities learned actually from each other because we already went back to this session but uh, what i think uh, that could be learned uh, for example uh, from um, zurich is that it's important to also look at your own democratic traditions and uh, build on those 
uh, Switzerland has uh, its own direct democracy, for example. Amsterdam has other assets. Uh, another lesson from Zurich would be to safeguard also space for industries and the circular economy and not only think about housing. Um, not that one would only think about housing, but it's very important to, to have some space for industries left. A uh, lesson from Amsterdam uh, to collaborate with other municipalities beyond the borders to invest in metropolitan landscape and quality of life and to experiment with new types of participation. So um, I, think, I think that's about um, what I can wrap up very quickly later in the report is more. Definitely. Uh, we uh, learn more about Amsterdam and Zurich further. Uh, I would invite David now for the next uh, city, uh, The Hague and Lyon. Yes. Uh, so indeed, we had a short uh, presentation from both uh, cities uh, and I'm going to really shortly wrap uh, uh, up on, on two parts, actually. Uh, the vision part and the method part where we were mostly discussing. And what we noticed is for the Netherlands is that the Novi does give a lot of assignments and uh, integral, integral uh, thinking or working on it. But it doesn't give us inspiration how to move forward and what should be the uh, what should could the city do, uh, especially in Hague. Uh, uh, Notice that uh, uh, a lot. And what we learned from uh, uh, Lyon, this is that there's is a complexity of assignments, but uh, maybe we shouldn't make one more plan or we shouldn't make just one plan, as as uh, Eric showed uh, the the examples of Amsterdam, where there's like one plan that try to bring everything together. Maybe it's no longer possible to just make one plan. And uh, what I also like from uh, Lyon is that we maybe we should learn to plan more as we are a poor city and uh, really uh, in, uh, pick out what we really need as a, what really needs to be done instead of uh, trying to fix everything, but really try to focus. It could help us as, uh, as a focus. That's for part of the uh, vision part then and the methods. What we uh, learned is that uh, the methods as well works uh, for decision makers and uh, eldermen to help them think about, uh, to think more creative to, the, the, than we are thinking specifically on the method used in uh, Lyon. Um, and help them to make decisions, but also show how the complexity of, uh, 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 of assignments are and how to indeed put them together and where could be uh, uh, no regrets uh, uh, at least done. If you would work more with uh, uh, citizens, I think uh, what we learned there is that we need you need to build up complexity. Um, and you have to start quite easy. Uh, what I now learn in Lyon is that uh, um, you have to start small. They have to start may also not a serious game, but maybe also a fun game. Uh, and then try to build up uh, further what they, what then that we learned from uh, Den Haag is, for example, start making design for your own neighborhood. Do that for several parts uh, in uh, Den Haag and then bring all these groups together and then let them discuss what that would mean on the city level. So really building up uh, complexity. That was it. Thank you so much, David. Uh, I invite next uh, Aryan to talk about uh, Rotterdam, Utrecht, and uh, Oslo. Uh, yes. Um, well, thank you all for participating. It was a really nice talk, I thought. Um, we started talking about uh, regional uh, collaborations and the different models we have um, to do this. Um, and came out that in Oslo, there actually is quite a strong tradition in uh, collaborating regionally um, on the basis on, for transport. Uh, and this transport agency actually formed a really good, good basis for uh, a urban, urban uh, regional development plan when this was needed. Um, and actually all the, the municipalities there, they are really on the same page uh, because of this long uh, uh, tradition of collaboration. Um, while in the Netherlands, uh, or in Rotterdam, for example, uh, in the region, there is the Verstelkings uh, Alliance, which is more like a coalition of the of the willing. Some municipalities who who came together by themselves and made an offer uh, to the national government. Uh, while in Utrecht, it's more of a negotiation between a lot of uh, adjacent municipalities, 
um, while they are struggling a bit with uh, all the interests of the municipalities themselves. Um, and then at some point, um, someone noticed that we are really uh, talking still about this institutional world and uh, that the paradigm shift actually should come uh, from uh, involving more with, uh, with people, with citizens and also with politicians. Um, and Peter Austin from Oslo also gave some uh, good examples about that. Um, how they uh, really uh, involve politicians of all these municipalities in the region. Um, they talk to them really regularly and make them really own this, this, this vision and, uh, and involve them in the, in the process. Um, and they are actually also do this with the different uh, landowners in this region. So uh, one statement was uh, involve more people with less information. Uh, because we as planners have uh, a lot of words and uh, we know what we talk about, but it's really difficult to get it uh, to the people and, uh, and the politicians. And that's uh, a task ahead. Thank you, Aryan. That's a really interesting statement that involves more people with less information. Maybe that's a big debatable topic itself. Let's see how we elaborate that in our report. Uh, lastly, I would like to uh, int uh, invite Anna Luisa for uh, Helsinki and Eindhoven. Sure. Uh, actually, I, I took literally your, your requests of just saying two sentences. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we try to just uh, uh, make a sort of summary uh, related to what each city thought of one another and of the dialogue today. So we thought it's, it's nice maybe to wrap it up like that. And uh, we can basically uh, uh, point it out three main lines of, of, uh, of lessons that they pick up from one another or they would like to keep on informing one another. Uh, one of them has to do uh, with uh, how open planning is for the public or not. How, how, how much can you bring the planning into the public sphere of discussion? That was uh, brought up by, by Helsinki. So I don't know, we should open them up much more, learn from, from Netherlands on that. Um, Another thing is like, it's very important to open up this dialogue among cities on a very broad scale. So not only with our closest neighbors, then, then we can also learn the best about different practices because during the session, indeed uh, Eindhoven and Helsinki figured out why they were put in the same session. Like, oh yes, we share the same issues, mm -hmm. but indeed with a slightly different approach that could be very informative to one another. And another uh, issue was, for example, the way of interacting with, um, with the citizens yeah. or to, to how, how to share information or, or get information also. For example, in Helsinki, focus very much on this very open source uh, 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 pro providing of, of data, while uh, Eindhoven focus much more on directly approaching citizens and interacting with them. And they can, both cities can learn from this kind of uh, um, different approach. And, um, and lastly also, and, and also important was like, uh, Eindhoven was very interested, like, hey, we have to figure this out more in detail with you guys. So, I think it makes sense to a couple people more in relation to very specific challenges to figure out technicalities like, hey, how can we actually figure this out further? And so, yeah, that those were the main conclusions of our talk today. No. And it was a great talk, actually. So thank you all again for making part of it. Thank you, Anna Luisa. And I totally agree with you that at the end, uh, Eindhoven asked that we should be in contact and we should try and learn more in specific subjects that how we deal with it uh, here. And more or less what I can understand or I can conclude is that, of course, we divided the cities, grouped them in terms of their challenges, in terms of their process, how they're working on the visions. But at the same time, the challenges, the environmental challenges or the societal challenges that we have in the planning system are more or less the same. So anyhow, from all the reports, I'm hoping that uh, the other session cities will be also able to understand each other. So it's not that... Uh, the report should be very specific to two cities or three cities. Rather, all the cities should have some gain some kind of knowledge from this report. Uh, I pass on the mic to uh, Paul then. Uh, Paul Gerritsen, the director of Delta Metropole. I want to know what did he learn today from this meeting? Um, well, yeah, uh, thank you, Alan Krita, for, uh, for giving me the honor to wrap up just a little bit because I think we're maybe ready for drinks, um, yeah. even though we're not together, but uh, we will experiment with that uh, later on, see if that works out. Um, but um, in, in my perspective, um, we, um, 
we had a lot to talk about. And, um, and of course, that's always the, the case in this kind of setting. It's uh, you first need to learn to understand each other. So actually, we need a lot of time of interacting. And I think it's great that, that this kind of um, uh, talk can be the starting point of that. And what I learned is, uh, is picking up from uh, the meeting we had in December, um, uh, the dialogue number three, where actually it was pointed that it would be so important to, uh, to uh, not um, educate the planners, uh, the urban planners and the vision uh, makers uh, better in, in coping with, uh, with all kinds of uh, people needing to be included in the vision making, but rather vice versa, to uh, think about how to hand over your planning capacities to wider groups that are uh, stakeholders in this kind of process. So how do you um, uh, um, put this kind of uh, uh, capacities of looking uh, into the future a little bit and think about what that means for your decisions right now? And I think this point came back quite um, uh, explicitly in, in a couple of sessions. Uh, I think the emphasis on the, the role that the citizen played is, um, is very apparent. Um, and also has been uh, even more apparent just recently because of this uh, corona crisis. I don't know how it is with you, but I look out onto the city from, uh, from the room where I am now, and I just see how people sort of rediscover the, uh, their direct uh, surroundings. And, uh, and that kind of realization of uh, actually what it means to be a city as a citizen um, is, I think, very fundamental. And that point of thinking about creating a vision based on and through um, the citizens is of course the big uh, challenge uh, that requires experiments and that is also the big challenge so the vision making the the, uh, the the making of plans is by nature very structured and uh, it needs to be confronted with the a little bit much more muddy world of the uh, of all kinds of involvements of, of, of people. Of course, there's, uh, there's a lot of experiment, particularly on the local scale. And the question is also, how do you connect that to a larger strategic scale at which we, are, uh, which we need to be able to, um, to come forward with, with answers to the big challenges that we are facing? Because that, of course, is still mostly very fundamental, how to create a new balance that also has a relevant impact. Um, and, uh, and that uh, challenge, I think it was, uh, was mentioned also in, in the session with, uh, with, um, uh, with Amsterdam is, is, uh, is quite difficult to, uh, to achieve. Um, I just want to, uh, to, um, to, hand, um, uh, to ask one question to one person um, uh, also in the audience. I saw Klaas Kuitenbrauer, who is uh, actually uh, uh, normally our colleague at the new institute because he is uh, is we are we're we're based in the new institute so we're colleagues in that sense but we were also colleagues in starting um, a very interesting program uh, directed um, uh, at uh, at uh, cities and and municipalities in the in the Netherlands as a um, as a, a as an activity program uh, sideline to the uh, to the contribution of the Venice Biennial, and uh, that would start would have started on the 26th of uh, of March with a big meeting. That was um, not possible, but um, there was a smaller version made uh, online, and uh, and and that program is called fin uh, Values for Survival, and it's it's re trying to relate to the basic values that you start your vision making from uh, and it took its uh, hint from uh, the two uh, subjects that were uh, positioned at the Venice uh, Biennial so I'm also curious how that will go actually because it has been postponed as you might uh, know uh, the two uh, subjects were the mul multiplicity of other and the multi-species urbanism so really thinking about uh, urban planning in, the, in a completely different manner. Um, so, uh, Klaas, you are uh, now attached to that program. I'm, I'm just a little bit curious. There's a lot of talk about how, uh, and, uh, and I think um, uh, Joost van Eersel also mentioned to that, uh, about how this corona crisis has sort of sparked uh, the idea that some other things are possible as well. So, did you in your program manage to make that, um, to make that shift from, um, from uh, having actually the 
uh, downside of not being able to uh, to create a public a public program of interaction, but uh, but rather maybe um, has it sparked some sort of new thinking? Just to give you, yeah, um, or uh, there's a yeah, extreme, a, a very important question. Um, um, funny enough, like from my perspective, I have the feeling that the lift of the lockdown happens in a way slightly too soon to be sure to say this in the sense that you see a lot of uh, thorough thinking going into, but wait a minute, now we have to really kind of let this land in a very long-term alternative way of being. And just before those conclusions are being drawn, we're now lifting off. So we still have the chance to go back to normal. Mm -hmm. And there is no, no I mean, it's being said a lot the new normal is not the same as the old normal but we let's say we haven't made the shift fully enough to be able to be sure that we uh, uh, enter in a different mode of uh, of, uh, of uh, planning and relating to our surroundings so i think what is left i think you pointed it out clearly is the fact that uh, let's say individual citizens and groups communities relate to their surroundings now differently but the question is very much how this uh, um uh uh, lands again and grounds in other in other planning uh, planning processes. So I had yeah two uh, um, like one observation in a way that uh, struck me as a big difference between our conversation the conversation here and the one we had previously is that uh, the previous one was very much informed by the gnosis of, um, uh, of of the climate crisis as the thing the big external added complexity added need for speed in a way. Uh, that I um, uh, didn't hear mention at all. Of course, I missed most of conversations today. I only sk I skimmed through a lot, but I've only been there very briefly. But I missed that issue here. Uh, I missed the, the mentioning of that issue here. Uh, so I thought, uh, so this, this seemed to be dealing more with the intrinsic qu qu uh, questions of planning rather than that external pressure. So mm -hmm. I think, uh, and specifically in that context, your point of, that you already mentioned that that um, the need for developing shared values among all the different scale stakeholders at different scales in planning processes seem to be of key value. There will be need to improvise, like control. Mostly, we can forget about it. We can plan ahead, but we we don't know what's what's coming ahead of. We we know it will be difficult. We know it will be extremely complex. So what we need is a kind of an orientation to what binds us in the present rather than what will is our f uh, vision for the future. And that what binds us in the present can only be that thing which yeah, we can label a value. And I think this is also the, exactly the question that you address, like how um, planners relate to citizens, relate to all kinds of initiatives that together make cities. Yeah, it's, uh, as everybody knows, not only the planner that makes the city, although they have a key, a central role, but how these relations can work, like what is the mechanism of that correlation between all those mechanisms on a different scale. Yeah, we arrived at that question of, of, of shared value as, a, as a, and I think a conversation like this helps extremely good uh, to get, get a picture of that. Yeah. Um, okay. That's mainly. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward how, uh, how your conversation uh, continues and maybe also yep. how we can uh, sort of uh, combine that uh, uh, in, the, in the coming months a little bit further. And I hope the best for uh, the Venice Biennial, that there will be some possibility of, uh, of opening uh, uh, that yep. uh, as well uh, later on in the, in, in the year. So I, I would just like to, um, to, to before I hand uh, the word to, uh, to Alan Krita for, uh, for the last uh, practical consideration, I would like to uh, say a big thank you to uh, all of our international guests. So nice that, uh, that we now have this opportunity might maybe much more easily to, to uh, interact. Of course, it requires a little bit of, of uh, finding out how this conversation works uh, best. Also many thanks to the representatives of the different cities of uh, uh, that that were there of uh, of uh, of the Dutch cities and uh, and of course for the for the whole uh, audience of um, of uh, participating and um, of course I would also like to give a very uh, warm and uh, and well deserved thank you to my colleague uh, Alain Krita Sakar who uh, managed uh, almost completely uh, uh, alone to organize this um, this big meeting. So a great uh, a job for you and uh, also for um, uh, for chairing this uh, session. So thank you very much. And, uh, and um, with that, I think it also is fitting that I give you the last uh, words. Thank you so much, Paul. 
uh, I would like to mention one more special thank you here. Uh, that is to Dagmar Kim and Eric Pasphere. They were the ones who had this idea that uh, let's uh, let's uh, do this city reviews and see that how where we where do we stand and what can we learn from each other. Uh, coming back to the point from class, we I would personally like to include that uh, climate uh, idea in this new planning perspective as well. So maybe further we can reach out to you and see how we can connect the dots between these two research. Uh, so I won't take any more time. Thank you everybody for joining. One strong statement came up from Leo. Uh, he said that don't underestimate Corona, but at the same time, don't make it the new planning paradigm. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a good point to keep in mind at the end. Um, I think if we have time, there's a question from Hans Bauer. Yeah. Um, do you want to ask? Uh, yeah, maybe Hans, if you want to put up the question by yourself, can you unmute yourself? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, um, just uh, referring to, to the, the last speaker uh, about uh, maybe uh, we have to develop more an, a framework of, of, of values instead of a particular vision or a set of scenarios because you are working with uncertainty and uh, that will be for always. And uh, yeah, just uh, put in uh, something for to uh, for the discussion. I, I think uh, shared values as a framework, and uh, maybe developing uh, such as such, and maybe it will be more robust and uh, adaptive to all kinds of uh, unforeseen uh, incidents. Yeah. Thank you so much, Hans. Uh, Paul, do you want to say something about it or we wrap it up? Um, w well, I think um, there's more to be uh, worked on, definitely. So that's clear. I'm, uh, I'm just um, uh, wanting to, uh, to have a drink. Uh, so, um, uh, so basically, I'm looking forward to, uh, to that, actually. <laughs> so, uh, OK. So everybody will be in touch further for the upcoming meetings of new planning. You will be uh, invited in each one of them and you will get receive more uh, ideas from this session and the reports. As much as we hate the technicalities with this digital session, it saved a lot of carbon dioxide to fly out the experts from other countries. So in a way, it's already good. Uh, because this is the first digital session, we would like to have this opportunity to get some inputs and feedbacks from you. You are the first uh, digital guests of Delta Metropole, so maybe you can write some feedbacks for us in the chat box or you can, of course, send us an email about it. So maybe let's all raise a glass of drink, water, tea, anything would do, or maybe wine by today almost uh, Friday evening. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much, everybody. Have a nice uh, evening ahead. Have a nice weekend. I'm sending you to a breakout session. It's an optional thing if you want, if you can join for a few minutes with a couple of colleagues. It won't be recorded. So uh, it's more like an individual discussion that you can have. Mm -hmm.